What's up, YouTube and This is your man, TiVo. Welcome to Lords of the Box Office. That's right, even though I don't have a Lords of the Box Office shirt, <laughs> this is one of the few times I actually review movies. I typically don't review movies. I really, uh, I'm looking, uh, only review movies I'm really looking forward to or something that's really big or something that's personal to me. And this review happens to be my review of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings starring Simo Liu as Marvel's kickoff, official kickoff of Phase 4, you might say. Um, I've seen it twice now. I saw it last night. If you watched the live show from last night, I kind of bolted out of there because I had a 7 o'clock showing. And I saw it again, first thing again this morning at 10 a.m. Bushy-eyed, drank a cup of coffee, didn't have any soda, popcorn or anything. Just wanted to enjoy, watch the film and see if there was any really nitpicks that I had the first time watching it. Um, and I can honestly say I like it more even here's a butchering of the English language, but I like it more better the second time, if, <laughs> if you understand what I mean. After the second viewing, I actually got more involved in the characters, I involved with the movie, involved with the story of Simu Liu, because after reading, after watching it last night, I saw some of the online complaints uh, um, of the typical, typical people who complain about things on Twitter. Twitter in Latin means divisive, by the way. I don't know, I just made it up, but it sounds good. But... I really, really enjoyed the film. I put it right up there as one of the best solo Marvel films of all time. Some, one of the best Marvel films of all time. Being that a lot of solo Marvel films nowadays, they have a lot of help of known bigger MCU characters. If you think about Captain America, um, you know, Civil War. Uh, if you think about, you know, uh, Thor Ragnarok, you know, Thor and Loki, all those characters. I mean, Sh Shang-Chi basically has himself, but... He has a stellar cast of international superstars in Michelle Yeoh, Tony Leung, and Yun Hua, who, if you really pay close attention, is in this movie. He was also in a film by the great Stephen Chow called Kung Fu Hustle. I don't want to give too much away, but he's also in this film. Tells a story, and it, and it, it deviates a lot from the comic book, I must say. The first act definitely has a Jackie Chan stunt uh, fighting team feel to it. Rest in peace. Brad Allen, you did an absolutely fantastic job as the fight coordinator for this film. The first uh, half or first act of the film has a much more grounded martial arts style, very akin to Jackie Chan's modern stuff. The third act of the movie is absolutely bonkers, straight on wuxia, something you would see out of a classic uh, Chinese novel from the 1800s or 70s, you know, from a f just basic Chinese mythology. We got to see foo foo dogs or she a uh, foo dog or shishi lion is what they're called. They're basically ghost guardians of of uh, temples. You see them in front of Chinese restaurants. You see them everywhere nowadays, and they come to life. I'm not spoiling anything because you see them in the trailer. There's an even a bigger bigger reveal at the end of the trailer. The only complaint I would have about the third act of the film it gets a bit CGI heavy. But for a character who's considered a street level character, I mean, where they went with this totally blew my mind. And I have no problems with it. Uh, the middle of the movie, it does slow down a bit, but it really, if you really kind of let yourself be engrossed by it, it really kind of tells you the family. And it's all, and I hate to sound like Dominic Toretto, but it is about family. <laughs> you know what I mean? From uh, Shang-Chi, his sister, his dad, his mom. There's some really beautiful scenes in there. The cinematography is absolutely incredible. Uh, great job all around by Marvel. I can't wait to see more of Simu Liu and the Ten Rings or whatever iterations they may have. I'm going to probably see it a third time this, again this weekend. Uh, I saw it one time in, in AMC Prime. This, this morning I saw it in uh, Dolby, AMC Dolby, and I'll try to catch it on IMAX this weekend. I, I think it's that great. And and the, the two films that I were most worried about that came into the MCU for me were Doctor Strange and Master of Kung Fu, because those were two of my favorite characters. Doctor Strange obviously is my favorite character, and I was worried that they weren't going to do the character right. The only worries I had about Shang-Chi was how they're, they, if they could pull off the martial arts, and they did. They nailed it in all forms, from very uh, street-level, fist-to-fist combat, to the more fantasy-level elements of wuxia that you're used to in some uh, Hong Kong films like... Uh, um, you know, uh, Storm Riders, uh, let me see, League of Gods most recently, uh, any Monkey King movie that you've ever seen in Hong Kong. I've been in Hong, I've been watching Hong Kong movies since I was a child. I saw my first Chinese film in the big screen in Chinese with American subtitles. That's how long ago. And then I remember seeing the Chinese connection in the movie theater 
before it was actually, I found out it was called actually Fist of Fury by Bruce Lee. So uh, the first Shaw Brothers I saw was actually in a, in a movie theater and it was shown with in spoken in Cantonese. Yes, Cantonese because it was a Shaw Brothers movie, but it had American subtitles. So uh, I, uh, for those who in China who feel like they need to boycott this film or not watch this film, just watch it because I you guarantee I think you guys will love this movie. I, I don't care what Weibo says or what Chinese Twitter says or whatever about Simu Lu and everything. The shocking thing is a third of this movie is in Mandarin, which is kind of awesome. Uh, Simu Lu does a very well good Cantonese accent, from what I can tell. Uh, Aquafina, either you love or you hate her. I don't really. I'm not really in the boat either way or the other. I will say she has great on-screen chemistry with Simu Lu. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I was just so glad it's doing well. It's doing well at the box office. I sat, I, I live in Irvine and Irvine is a large Asian population, a large Chinese Asian population. And I was happy to see that there was a lot of Asian faces in the theater. I don't know if they're Vietnamese, Chinese or whatever they are, but there was young, there was old, there was an older Chinese couple next to me. I knew this cause they were speaking Mandarin. Uh, and the lady shed a tear, believe it or not. That's why I know how I know the film was good. Thoroughly enjoy it. Make sure you're catching it, theater guys. I can't tell you how much I thoroughly enjoy this movie. Uh, once again, rest in peace to Brad Allen. You did a great job with the fight choreography and the entire stunt team. Shout out to Andy Lee and the Marshall Club. Andy Lee played the Death Dealer, who is also very a big YouTuber, and they do these great uh, kind of kung fu parody videos. That the famous one is Avengers Endgame. They just do great fight choreography all together. So check out the Marshall Club on YouTube. Um, can't say any more about man. Second time, I thought I'd I'd like it less. I actually liked it more. So. Go out and see Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, so, shish here and keep digging in the long boxes. Peace out.